Hey, what's going on everyone? It is Brian, we are back and I have a very exciting video for you all. This is another one of our first reviews, first impression videos, and we have hot off the presses, the Sealbox Private Reserve first batch that they have. Uh, this is gonna be coming in at 114.8 proof. And this is a straight bourbon whiskey finished in toasted French oak and maple syrup barrels. Let's go to the back. Uh, and we'll read a little bit about the makeup of this. It says, Sealbox is an independent bottler of exceptional spirits. This bottling started with a blend of two lots of barrels. It's 66% two-year and six-month-old bourbon and 34% of 10-year and two-month-old bourbon. The mix rested it in new medium toast French oak barrels and ex-bourbon maple syrup barrels. Each barrel independently adds depth and complexity. The final batch marries notes of blah, 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 blah. We're not gonna get into what it tastes like. This comes from Blake at Bourboner Sealbox. Uh, we've talked before on the Entry Proof podcast, not only with him, but as the uh, person who's brought in the Entry Proof picks for us and is just curating a site that's just driven towards craft whiskey and this newer um, age of whiskey that we are in with craft distillers and the experimentation and all these things that they have going on. And this is Blake's uh, first foray um, into as a seal box purveyor um, to, to bring out uh, a whiskey. It says it is distilled in Lawrenceburg, aged in Chattanooga, finished and bottled by Manifest Distilling in Jacksonville, Florida. I will say this does go on sale at the time of this recording here just next week, September 1st. Blake, thank you so much for sending me one of these bottles. And I figured why not go ahead, pop it open and get some first impressions for you all. So let's go ahead and get into this wax. Ooh, nice pop there. We're gonna let this air for just a little bit and I'm gonna come right back. But also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have poured over uh, to the side to compare afterwards with a Starlight French Oak uh, pick as well. This is from a group out of Northern Kentucky area but it's the closest thing that I had that might have this kind of French oak uh, profile too. And with the average of this seal box bottle being somewhere around the five year range, after you do the math from the 10 year barrels and the two and a half year barrels, I figured that might be a good place to kind of give a comparison. While we wait, why don't you jump down below, give me that thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel if you have it. I'd love to know if you all are getting enjoyment out of the stuff that's on the channel and if you all like when we're able to do these first impression pops, if they're helpful to you all or not. All right, kind of dive into the, the nose here. I don't know if you can see that moving on the glasses uh, at all. It does have um, a little slow movement there on the nose. Uh, interestingly enough, and I don't know if this is just something I'm honed in on senses wise lately, but it comes again with that kind of summer fruit or the orchard fruit, um, notes like we've mo uh, mentioned in a couple of pours so far. So you get kind of some, some peachiness, you get some melon notes, you get, um, just a lot of, uh, a bursting fresh fruit aromas in the glass. I, I thought initially when I first poured it, that there was a little bit of like youthful grain in there, like some sweet grains. And it's it's placed in there a little bit, but it's dissipated since I first poured it. It's been open, you know, five, seven minutes right now. And the, the grain has thinned a little bit in the glass and in favor of more of the, the maple or like syrupy influence there for sure. There's a slight bit of floral to it. There's this kind of nice, like a chocolate malt kind of note to it uh, and some some pleasing, um, really balanced baking spice to the nose as well. Uh, it's a pretty rounded nose. It's very sweet. It's very inviting. Uh, let's go ahead and go in for a taste. Woo, ma'am, right away, that is coating. That, that is very rich. Um, there's a lot. That's a syrupy pour right there. I mean, the palate is just this deep, sweet, rich coating. And it's everywhere. Profile that definitely leans into like 
um, maple or pancake syrup definitely makes you think of that. And to be honest, the first thing that I thought of when I tried it was like, this is a finished version of smoke wagon uncut and filter. That's the first, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go grab that and, and try that in with this as well. Pleasing baking spices, but in a, in a sweet uh, bow, like there's a sweet, um, it's like baking spices to, as a present, it's wrapped in like a pretty little bow. You get more of the orchard fruit come out. You get some uh, dark fruits, so you get like some kind of raisin notes in there, some, some dried fruits kind of hanging on to the oak notes that are there. Um, and the oak notes do finish a little bit on the palate, but it, it just fills the middle with a lot of uh, cake-like sweetness, um, like cake batter, vanilla, caramel-like notes right in the middle. You let it move around in the mouth a little bit. The spice draws out a little bit more, which balances the pour a little bit from being, you know, as sweet as it is. There's like some salty characteristic to it as well, which kind of, again, lifts it from just being overly sweet. And then you start, you start to notice those oak notes uh, kind of drawn a little bit more. And the long lingering finish kind of, it has a subtle spice prickle to it and then kind of coats your mouth like you just finished a nice piece of like a like a 70 percent dark chocolate or something like that so it's some, not something that's too bitter but not something that's too um light milk chocolatey and sweet something that definitely has more of a, a cocoa presence but it's pleasing as it leaves and i don't know i don't know if you've ever gone to a bar or even made it home like just a super decadent delicious old-fashioned where the bourbon is balanced right. The simple syrup is like maybe a, a touch heavy handed, but it adds to this nice viscosity. And then you got Luxardo cherries dropped in there, giving this kind of like nice red cherry fruit going on there. And you drink it and you're just like, oh, this is just perfect balance of flavor. That is this glass right here. Let's transition real quick over to the Starlight. I want to see what the Starlight has. On the nose right away, um, it, this is a little bit more grainy and it has uh, more like bright popping apple notes. Yeah, the palate's definitely sweet. It has more of a, like a graham cracker sweetness, but you immediately can tell that the body just feels a little less rich, a little less full. Yeah, the Starlight, it's, um, it's pretty linear in terms of uh, how it approaches the mouth. It kind of hits on the side of the gums, sits on the tongue a little bit, and then goes down um, this seal box just kind of moves all over and it really fills all of the senses of the palate. Uh, quickly, let's jump over here to the Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered. This is batch 61 that I have. I just want to do a quick little taste of this, not even really on the nose, but the palate has some good balance of spice, oak, and sweetness. Uh, I want to do that just transition again real quick to the seal box. Yeah, the seal box is like a deeper, sweeter blanket. It's it's basically as if you poured maple syrup over the smoke wagon. I'm pretty pleased. I really didn't know what to expect. Um, reading that it had, you know, 66% of this younger uh, MGP stuff in there. And then with it being French oak and maple, it's hard to tell really what you're going to get. But nowhere through the process do I really notice a whole lot of graininess except for maybe a little bit on the nose where you get some sweet grains, but then on the palate, what comes out most, maybe you have some like sweet creamed corn somewhere there on the palate, but it's all these vanilla notes and caramel notes and um, cake-like notes that kind of cover over the palate, but it doesn't take away from the way that it finishes, which I feel like was maybe where the, the tenure kind of comes in and, and kind of just tingles the palate with some good spice and then lingers with some oak and some maturity to really fill out a little bit more dimension to this big sweet profile all right guys that's it i'm looking forward to seeing how this seal box continues to open up this is definitely um, a desserty uh, welcomed um, profile that still has uh, really good proof but if you're one who likes finished whiskeys but you also kind of like the mgp profile if that's sort of the the style that you've been drinking, 
this is gonna be good. If you like desserty type pours, this is gonna be good for you. If you ended up liking the Stellum, I tried the Stellum as well, and it has some similar flavors. This takes it up to 11 in terms of the sweetness, whereas the Stellum I feel like has a little bit more spice, but the body that you're gonna get on the seal box is just, it's just huge by comparison. If you guys like hearing me talk about first impression reviews, please, like I said earlier, leave me a comment below and let me know if you do. If you all want more content, please tune into the Entry Proof Podcast. That's a podcast that I do with Drew P. Whiskey. He's also here on YouTube and we're generally live on his channel Thursday nights, either doing blind tastings or just general chit chat, or we have guest interviews as well. If you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash entry proof podcast. That's where you get access to behind the scenes footage, fuel what you already have going here on the channel and have access to the entry proof podcast barrel picks. We have a couple already done and a couple more lined up until next time, everybody. We'll see you later.